Alright, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for VV Fluoride, Fluoride Ice, Ice Song, Song, episode three. three. Oh All boy. Right. We cannot mm. deviate from the timeline, Jacob. Yep. Except mm -hmm. for trying to also save the future from right. the current timeline. Minimal deviations. Mm -hmm. We will stop the rogue AI with the rogue AI. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, Vivi, huh, how are you going to handle this one? Yeah, I think, I... Uh, I think Vivi, you might end up having some issues with the way uh, uh -huh. things go here. Might be a little bit out of your depth. Yeah. Might need help. Might need a lot of help. Uh -huh. I think that one of the most exciting things I have like to look forward to in this story is the way in which Vivi is going to need to actually enlist humans yes. to help save right. humanity. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. I cannot wait to see how that happens because this feels like the prologue arc. Yeah. Like this whole yeah. thing with saving Aikawa. Mm -hmm. That was just not... the getting her to be active. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It did it did not feel like the um the action itself, but more of the recruitment stage. Right. And Matsumoto um definitely seems to be aware of that. Uh-huh. Yeah, and now yeah. there's already complications there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and fun little detail. Apparently, Matsumoto is voiced by Koro Sensei yeah, from which Assassination is Classroom. Just, <sighs> I totally That's hear so it. Fun. And now, now it's like, because because I had this whole thing of like, oh yeah, I trust this guy. But at the same time, some of the some some of the things he'll say are like, mm, I don't know. So now yeah. having him be all terrifying machine overlord. Yeah, I think with the voice of Koro Sensei. Yeah, I think we don't have any choice but to trust him. <sighs> Because I, I don't think Vivi can do it alone, but I also don't think Matsumoto was sent here to do this by himself. So therefore, the, Vivi is absolutely necessary in order to make this happen. So right. Let's find out why. Yeah. Y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen so, years have gone by. Uh -huh. We have I the next it. problem. We're mm -hmm. trying to create a divergent path, but yep. one that will probably change the future dramatically, given that they're trying to stop a right. global catastrophe from mm -hmm. happening. Yep. And it means that we're about to go off a, in a way against what Matsumoto's uh, philosophy yes. was for the first incident, because mm -hmm. that one wasn't as big of a deal, I guess, as compared to this one. Right. And I love that okay. uh, we are we are getting that reinforcement of how crazy the butterfly effect can be, mm -hmm. and you yeah. know which which basically is the is the argument for Matsumoto's way of doing things, yep. even though it's very cold and terrifying, right? Yeah, Aikawa was influenced by his interactions mm -hmm. with Vivi to the point that not only did this <laughs> move things in a direction for AI evolving in a dramatic way. But having an even stronger <laughs> push towards AI's rights, specifically. Right. Yep. Now, now, where we're at right now, we haven't had any kind of doomsday stuff from Matsumoto and that this is nope. headed in a bad direction. Therefore, therefore, I would say that things are headed in a good direction thus far. Right. But we have now seen one of the instances, or now a couple of those instances, as to why or how AI are now a whole generation beyond where Vivi was at. Yep. And can be autonomous AI that, you know, can own property, mm -hmm. can have, you know, independent thoughts, um, yep. uh, a form of programmed emotions, all these complex things about them, even to the point that some of the kid AI show up at her actual right. performances. Yep. Which is like, and it's, and they didn't necessarily seem like it's, oh, we're here with somebody like I could totally see there being something where it's like you have a kid AI because someone loses their child and then yeah. they need like a replacement or something yeah. you know, to emotionally cope or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so they take their kid to the, you know, the fair or something. Sure. Right. Or or yeah, it's like a, a grandparent that, you know, needs someone to basically be a companion of. sorts. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they seemed they looked like they might have been there by themselves or at least some of them and 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 you That's even brought fascinating. up fascinating yeah oh yeah super fascinating you even yeah. brought up the idea that they were holding their backpacks differently which, which doesn't make sense personality and yeah. like 
yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense from the logical perspective of there's mm -hmm. clearly probably one calculatable best way to hold the backpack yep. while sitting down, and one of them is by definition not doing that. Right, then. because maybe they have different priorities, right? You know, they're yeah. thinking about different things that change the variables, right? Yeah, yeah. and th that's, it's like it's basically awesome. body language in an AI, which is which is yep. crazy uh -huh. to think. About. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So love it. So okay, we have a. Space Hotel, mm -hmm. which is a source of ways that humanity is evolving, yeah. not just in that we are getting more adept with utilizing space as a source of, you know, exploration, income, sure. business, all that jazz, but we have an AI in Estella mm -hmm. who is the heir of this hotel, right? Because the previous owner, who was a human, died. And in a tragic accident, in a tragic accident that could not be traced back to her. But at the end of this episode, the other AI that was giving rumors about Estella uh -huh. was brutally murdered, like yep. head ripped off and in the most unsuspecting right. cold way. She seemed to be trusting Estella, too, which yeah. is the crazy thing, because she specifically sowed doubt in Vivi's mind about Estella, mm -hmm. right? odd that you would do that to yeah. someone that you know comes on to the hotel and everything mm -hmm. when then you apparently are working with estella in secret for something and then estella well takes care of a witness right yeah she handed off something uh-huh something that we probably have no way of knowing what that actually is sure but it's something that is tied to the past because leclerc was saying that she's been waiting so long for this day Right. Which I would assume means that from before, when the owner was originally alive, yeah. there was something that they had been waiting to do. It depends what that is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things about, um, trope-wise, whenever a lot of characters say how wonderful an environment is and how we're so happy to be here oh. and that the hospitality is amazing that there's probably some dark undertones of what's sure. actually going on uh -huh. but we don't know how much that is tied specifically to just maybe an independent ai that's starting yep. to have some issues with it like estella or if it was a systematic right. thing that was even started by the human who ran the place back Cause, then because estella really did seem to be sad over the loss of the the previous owner right yeah like like when she was singing and all of that stuff like even though she was very much doing her job mm -hmm. yeah. she was emotional about this whole thing yeah. which feels in contrast to how she was when she killed uh leclerc mm -hmm. because that was that was epitome of like cold robot i rip your head off right mm -hmm. so where's the you know where do those two things like f find a balance or coexist right clearly they might be out of balance and that's why this is happening but i I wonder if they're going to take the direction that, like, because AI generally don't have emotions very much, they're not necessarily, like, maybe there aren't as many either societal or programming support structures for them to be able mm -hmm. to deal with those emotions. So sure. let's say you have someone who, you know, well, we know that she has worked here for seven years, right? Yep. We don't know how long she's been in existence before that. Theoretically, sure. she could be equivalently seven years old, seven years old yep. and she just she lost the person that was most important to her she's had to keep this job going and everything and she doesn't know how to grieve she doesn't know yeah, how to you know, feel about that right and one of the things that i saw as a weird thing and that the song probably was her only true source of characterization beyond that oh, uh -huh. was that it talked about the idea of loss and how i long to see you again and that I, there's something that has been a memory that I wish I could, I wish I could contain. I wish I could like mm -hmm. hold on to, and thus this might by this might be her like faking her death, to like, you know, be sure. free of this so that she can, right? Like I don't know, like the you know not have to deal with it anymore. Or yeah, something. like yeah. because I get the feeling that the crash was as a result of this emotional experience basically yeah. that she probably didn't know fully how to handle like even when she talked about the heart with vivi she was like huh, look it's so silly an ai talking about the heart it's like no that's actually it's yeah, actually that's a amazing. very yeah that's a very normal and and probably good thing to talk about right like it it almost gives me the the sense of like when you when you see the people who had their feelings kind of like suppressed because of like their external environments of like the mm -hmm. you know 
the the young boy who's like, oh, real men don't cry, or you know, or something like that. And then as a result, they act up in some extreme way because they don't know how to actually deal with it. And then they come up with some idea as a way to address it that's not good, right? For sure, for sure. And that doesn't have to be what it is here, but I feel like that's what they're getting at, maybe. Because I don't like like they could totally go for the angle that the owner was actually like a monster of some kind, you know? But yeah, like, I get that. But he might... seemed. Yeah. He seemed like he was an actually, like, good dude, you know? Like, yeah, it also might be inefficient story-wise to try and communicate that so quickly when we don't have any uh, evidence to support that. Mm. And thus, it would undermine what Matsumoto was saying in that it was actually a freak accident. And because he's the most advanced AI we've interacted with, we kind of have to take his exposition uh -huh. at his word right. unless he's seeking to manipulate vv now granted it is totally possible that in this situation they might have limited info on what happened because the thing you know burned up in re-entry and crashed and all of that stuff right there could totally be like some things that they didn't know right mm -hmm. at the very least they didn't know why it happened they but they just know that estella is the only one who could have done it right but you know okay yeah. What do you think about this thought about she was talking about? What do you think about space, Vivi? Because she talks oh, about yeah. how when humans experience the beauty and danger of space, they stop. Basically, they 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 they're awestruck. Yeah. They're awestruck. Yeah. But she shows in her mind's eye effectively the previous owner here, mm -hmm. and it's him looking up at the the stars. Yep. Yeah. Admiring the beauty. Yeah, and then the previous owner used to say that it was the cosmos at work. What does that even? What does that even mean? Because I feel like she doesn't even fully know what that means. Right. Except the way she's talking about it so, like, of her own volition. Like, she mm -hmm. brought up this topic. Yep. Probably to get this off of her chest. Right. Why? Yeah, it, it feels like the, the whole thing of her, the fact that she said she begged the family yeah. to let her keep running the, the establishment, that also felt very telling. Because yeah. Because that's, that's a very emotional thing to say. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, that not only was it an emotional thing that happened, mm -hmm. but she is able to recognize it as such that she begged, right? Yeah. Maybe it's because she's trying to remain close to the thing that he loved so much, right? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it's very easy or cheap or, or whatever to get something like this set up where you're running a space hotel. Sure. You know? So it she was... blames herself for his death, maybe? Uh, sure, yeah, maybe. Or at the But at the very least, this meant so much to him. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, he loved space. He loved being up here. He loved running this place. I can't yeah. bear to see it go away. Very human thing, right? Yeah. That's the part that feels... But how does that get to... Exactly. You know... The whole thing is crashing. So I, I feel like on some level, what's, what's going to happen is that space is either dangerous mm -hmm. and something happens and she cannot bring herself to part with this. And it's not that she crashes it. It's that she's the only one trying to save it, really. And okay. she can't really do anything about All it. All right. So she directs it. It's a controlled crash. It goes into sure. the ocean. Right, yeah. She, yeah, uh-huh. It's her guaranteeing that no one else has to die, basically. Right. Because there's an aspect about the plane crash that very much felt like a, oh, that's actually kind of similar to this. And what mm. Vivi probably would have been able to do at most is just guide the crash or save maybe one or two people to get out of the plane. Right. Like, Vivi wouldn't have been able to stop a plane crashing, yeah. probably. Uh-huh. Because whatever was causing it to crash was probably, you know, too much even of itself. Yeah. So this here could be a thing of where she's not actually some monstrous AI or what have you, except for the fact that the, the Leclerc instance yeah. happened. And that's where I'm wondering if... This is an AI that is dealing with the evolution towards humanity and doesn't have the mm -hmm. capacity to handle right. the emotional complexities of the heart. Yeah. You know? the, so so what I would what I would think this would be if I was like, you know, looking at like a like a regular person and, and the way that they might like mm -hmm. really um, uh, lose a struggle with grief over mm -hmm. over someone dying when it, especially if it's the first time that they've had something like that happen sure would be the nihilism train of thinking right yeah which is she keeps looking up to the stars with all right. this wonder and beauty well, so well does she well, not believe that i'm not sure if she does she she doesn't understand it and she looked probably the most <coughs> sad that i saw her in this episode 
was when, when she was she singing, was singing song, sure. right? Okay. Because maybe it's the thing of the these humans. I they don't have to, I don't have to pretend anymore. Right. They attribute yeah. it to the cosmos or whatever. Sure. I know that this gets them like this gets their rocks off basically out yeah, of some, finding down. some meaning. Right. I'll oh, show it oh, to them. Gotcha. And then it'll calm them down. But really, there is no meaning to all of this. You know, like like you know some something like that. Right. AI discovers nihilism. Yeah. Says, what's the point? Kills everyone else. See, I feel like, like that's a... That's a but that's even a, then, it feels shaky. Yeah, it feels super shaky because I, I don't think that... I don't think that she's... Mm, that's the thing. I can't... I can't... I can't rectify the murderer mm -hmm. of killing basically an AI, which now we've basically stated to be with the evolution of AI and with their rights and stuff like that. She is a murderer now. Uh -huh. She killed a person. Oh, yeah. And the AI programming probably was updated to account for the rights of other AI, mm -hmm. right? So so that's... She, which means she... basically she, killed a person here. Yeah, yeah. Which means that she also had the free will mm -hmm. to do that. And it was a... And it was a... It was a conscious action. Unless unless that, that random, like... The, the change in her demeanor during that time was like... Oh, this is actually something different about her, right? Like, sure. like she's gotten some virus or something, maybe. But like, I don't know. Like, because it because oh. it was definitely a deviation from her usual thing of the hey, happy, be a be a cheerful, like you know, like person that makes everyone stay here nice. And granted, you that would have to be some kind of facade if they're going to crash a hotel and kill a bunch of people. Well, but wait a minute, let's go at this at the simplest angle. She's trying to destroy the hotel. Sure. Let's just say there's a reason for it, but we don't know what, right? Okay, yeah. An AI is committing suicide then. Right. Why? Well, what if what if his death was a suicide? Okay. And she just doesn't have any grid for that. Sure. Why would a human stop dead in their tracks? Right. Yeah. Well. I, yeah. I, I really feel like the the main thing that has to be like thematically like kind of wrapped around somehow in the next episode is that we have hospitality, this mm -hmm. wonderful, safe yep. environment. And everything is right. wholesome and wonderful. Welcoming and discussion mm -hmm. about how space is dangerous and all this stuff. Right. But at the end of the episode tear the head off of an AI. Right. And I feel like that underlying dark thing that's hidden there being that it being that it's probably something like it is not like we're not having the wool pulled over our eyes and that this was actually some mercy killing basically. Right. Like it's it's totally antithetical to the robot that we saw playing with the children and exactly. taking care to make sure that they didn't get hurt while they while they were goofing off in low gravity. Right, which means there's yeah. a lie hidden within the truth or a truth hidden within the lie. There's something uh -huh. there's something about her that is contradictor contradictory right. to what she presents. And 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 what I would think that would be is that in a situation cuz AI aren't really supposed to change right but let's say let's well, say they at this did. point at this point i would say well, well yeah that that might be a bit different but yeah but if like okay if um if you have an event that basically makes you need to rethink your whole life right sure. you know the like the the world yeah. is collapsing all around you one. death of a loved one yeah. right you know uh -huh. shit right that will completely change you right and and you'll have to go through that sort of reforming process but what if because of your programming not being malleable, maybe, right? You hold to the objective that you believe you still have to have. Okay. But because of your own individuality, personality, you have basically lost your desire to go along with your programming, with your primary objective or something like that, right? Okay. And then as a result of that, you basically have the, you know, the 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 law and the chaos are in are in direct opposite, you know, like their direct opposite forces and then yeah, it like, like pulls you up me. like because because i don't see how there could be such a schism in her personality with the ripping off of the head unless it was some external thing or whatever like a virus or if she had that schism had hap had been happening over a long period of time i feel like the i feel like the simple answer mm -hmm. is we don't understand her emotions we don't understand her emotional state that's why sure. vivi calls it a virus but she's more mm -hmm. advanced than vivi right 
she has emotions. Yeah. I think the emotions are real. Mm -hmm. And it's just the thing of where from Vivi's perspective, oh, it's just a virus controlling her. What are emotions if, if not, not a virus? A, if not a virus yep. that basically takes us over at times and controls us and basically says, oh, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't help the way that you feel here. I mean, you can, but you also can't. So, so like, I, I feel like it's going to be a much simpler thing than, like, whether or not this is some kind of external thing. But oh yeah, I don't, I don't, th yeah. I don't think it's going to be an external thing. I think. If if that if that was the way that it was going to go, I don't think they would spend this much time having Vivi get to know her, right? Because well, right, because then that becomes a much less interesting story. Then it's yeah. passing the buck off to whoever introduced. No, no, no. The virus, I'm not. I'm not know. saying that. And I'm not, okay. I don't think that you were saying that. Okay, gotcha. But 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 the idea that oh, there's there's no way that her 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 schism within herself basically makes sense given the current info. I think that this is actually the like the full foundation for all the, the stuff there. The only thing that probably is something we're not aware of is what were the what were the potential things that were going on with the owner, given that he's a very important party of this event here. Right. That he's not around. Like what, yeah. Because like, yeah. like there, there's, there's a backstory that we're missing right now. Sure. There, there's two things that basically I'm, I'm well, okay, yeah, three things with the backstory, but that I'm looking for here. And that I think we'll, we'll probably we're probably going to get in the next episode. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily all of these. Is what's the actual emotional state of Estella? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. What is the details of the events that basically brought about this emotional state? The death of you know the That's owner right. and all that stuff. But then three, is there anything that is going to be introduced that is basically additional world building for how AI function when emotions start to get involved? Because this is something where even though it's 15 years post Vivi, this is still fairly new stuff, right? We like Vivi uh, was the was the first AI with autonomy, and now we're 15 years later. That's a big that's a set of big leaps, but it's not going to be like completely fundamentally different, right? I could totally why see not? that. Well, okay, it could be. This is this is the one that I think doesn't have to be in in yeah. the next episode, but I could definitely see this being a way to explore how AI function. Because I'm kind of looking for the way that we'll get to understand AI enough and how they function so that that way Vivi can be the bridge between both peoples rather than it just being something of destroying AI. Yeah, yeah, I got you. But that's that's the whole show. Like that's no, I feel yeah, like, but the, I feel like I feel like that's a that's a good there's a, there's examples of this being a microcosm for the mm -hmm. bigger conflict as a, as a whole. But I, just I feel, feel like it's it's it's. It's, um, like it doesn't have to happen, but I feel like there's a good opportunity for for a nugget of that here, basically. Right. I feel like that's what she was doing here by trying to understand her here. But Vivi is going to change. Like, oh, totally. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. but but I feel like that's brings in the idea that, well, then clearly this AI changed far more. Right. Vivi is going to change by the nature of living a hundred years. Right. Given that Estella is the most dramatic bad case of an AI going haywire. You know, in from from Matsumoto's future history, right? Right, right. That yeah. means that she is the most dramatic example of how an the, AI did change, an, of how an AI did change, yeah. and it went badly. And mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of where I'm looking for what the what the what the sauce is, what the chaos is, what the thing is that basically, you know. Yeah, that's the backstory, right? Right. Like is sure, but that's uh, that's gotta be that's gotta be what was the sequence of causes that led to this effect. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's going to be there. I just I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was something a little bit more getting to, to get at the this is how AI in general work. Right. Like, I just feel like I feel like that's that's too hard. That's too like focused hard on the idea of that. We need to understand how AI works when story meta wise, we don't really care how they work here because in an episode or two, we're potentially going to skip ahead another 10, 15 years. Uh, so it doesn't really matter so, so too much. I, I, I totally get what you mean. But if if the more understanding we get about AI, that's the more understanding we can get about how Vivi will go in the future, potentially. Because since this is a more advanced model, that means this AI could be running into problems that Vivi hasn't run into yet, Right. Because she's further down the 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 uh, the generational line. Yeah, yeah, I, but, I get what you're saying. Yeah, doesn't yeah. again doesn't have to be, but I would be really excited to see if they end up doing that. Either way, we've got a crazy setup episode here. 
I'm very curious how it'll be resolved because those are we are we have seen two very different versions of Estella. Mm. But yeah, and uh, this uh, meta wise as an arc structure, mm -hmm. where the first two episodes were basically the prologue of here we go, here's this time, we jump into the next episode. And we've already moved 15 years into the future. Yep. We have a little bit of a catch-up point with reconnecting Matsumoto and Vivi together. Doing that as the structure will put us into a position where we are rapidly approaching mm -hmm. 100 years into oh, yeah. the future. And Vivi will very much need to be ready for that. Because yep. so far, as of right now, we are already seeing some pretty crazy changes within her. And even though... It's been 15 years. It's only been three episodes. Right. And if they keep so, the pattern up of two episodes for 15 years, that's 90 years, you know, on 12 episodes. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And then there's the whole thing of the sister of the, the younger sister of the girl being here. Mm -hmm. That's going to make things complicated. Well, yeah. Now, now there's an emotional stake upon which she cares about not just stopping Estella, mm -hmm. but about saving Momoka's younger sister in a way right. that um, uh, might make her make a tough decision and turn potentially yeah. even then Vivi into someone that would potentially kill to save a life. Sure. She would trade lives effectively. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's, that's, that was brutal. The idea of, oh, you're popular, but you're not a household name yet. Right. That was lovely little foreshadowing to set up for Momoka's younger sister mm -hmm. to be like, no, if there was anyone that actually really cared about you, it would be someone directly tied to the first two episodes yeah. in some way. And look, what do you know? Uh-huh. Here we go. Ah! But oh, yo! Boy. Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. and All this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.